Hello everyone. So now we are moving to week number eight. So let, as usual, let me just give you a brief intro about what you can expect in the coming week. Uh, let's first of all go to the uh, lectures. Uh, for this week, uh, we are kind of back to normal. So it will be about three hours uh, for the lecture. So this week's maybe about three or four minutes uh, more than three hours. I'll try to balance this out maybe uh, in a later one, just to make sure you don't really, uh, you stay strictly below three hours, okay? And then, so for this week, there'll be two parts for the lecture. So, so the first part, we're going to revisit uh, about generics. For the first part, we're going to revisit about the difference between general book versus a generic book. So this will be like a, a try to look at the topics for generics from a slightly different angle, more from the inheritance, polymorphism, dynamic binding, and typecasting point of view. Especially we're going to see how the single choice principle can be violated if you don't really use generics properly. So that's something we'll discuss in the very first part uh, for this week. And for the second part, we're going to now move on to a new design pattern for solving the problem for interactive systems like uh, eBay, Amazon, or Taobao, you know, those uh, interactive system, uh, just uh, for example. And then we talk about three different design solutions and then talk about the pros and cons for each one of them. So the first one is going to be uh, assembly style. And the second one is going to be a uh, hierarchical procedural style, which is non OO. And then the third one will be about the OO solution, which is the so-called state design pattern, which also consists of another important pattern called template design pattern. So there's something I'd like to remind you about. You might find the template design pattern very similar to something you did in a previous lab, especially lab number two, and think about why. And uh, as usual, we got intro slides. We got uh, also the starter, uh, the starter iPad notes, and also the annotated iPad notes. Uh, you can study them. Uh, hopefully, that will be helpful for your learning. And uh, for the slides, we got uh, both for generics and also for the state design pattern. I also include uh, two uh, diagrams over here that will be uh, important for your learning. So one is about the architecture for uh, the dis uh, the state design pattern over here. So now, uh, there's something I would like to mention to you. Let me just uh, get a diagram here, over here. So the way I introduce uh, this design pattern over here, rather than showing you the code right away, pretty much like how we introduce to you the iterator design pattern, we need to know what the motivating problem is, and then we present to you the architecture for the design. It's really important for you to imagine what to, for you to derive uh, like a proper implementation from design diagram. So that's something I would like you to learn about. Okay, so that's why I introduced to you uh, just about the architecture first before I introduce to you the code, the implementation. The second diagram that you want to look at also carefully is how the runtime data structure looks like for the state design pattern from the client side. So of basically it's, uh, the idea about polymorphic array, and we talk about polymorphic collection from the previous review for the inheritance uh, lecture. So that's something you will see, uh, so hopefully some reinforcement for you on the concept. Okay, so these are the two diagrams you want to pay extra attention to. Let me now move on to uh, learning objectives and also milestone quickly. So we're going to revisit generics. As I mentioned before, we're going to see polymorphism, typecasting, and also single choice principle, especially, right, in the first part. And then we talk about the problem for interactive system. So it's a different problem that you will try to solve. Uh, you will try to solve uh, compared with uh, maybe a singleton design pattern or, or, or the iterated, de uh, iterated design pattern. Every time when you learn about a new design pattern, think about what the motivating problem is before you can apply uh, that particular pattern. And then also it's really important that to know about every problem of design you're trying to solve is open-ended, meaning that there might, ex there might exist multiple solutions to it, in which case, if I present to you maybe this different design attempt, you want to be able to criticize on the design, whether it's good or it's bad. Whenever you say a particular design is bad, you want to really support your arguments by using uh, what kind of design principles that particular design attempt is trying to, uh, is actually violating. So that's something I will also emphasize in my lecture. Okay, and then eventually we'll learn about state and also the template design pattern. Notice that we're learning two of them uh, in this particular lecture, okay? So what will be the milestone for week number eight? So uh, you were given some grace period for lab number three just to hopefully accommodate for those of you who are a little bit behind because of your midterm from other courses. However, I would not advise that you actually only finish lab three 
at the uh, on uh, at the end of the Wednesday. So if you have if uh, if that's something you have done, so I would say you hope you already sacrificed some time already for your project. But anyway, that's your choice. But uh, you should definitely complete lab three uh, as soon as possible. And then for your projects, it uh, is basically released uh, in the beginning of. Uh, uh, basically just release on schedule. I even released that slightly earlier just for those of you who want to get a uh, earlier start. Notice that for project it's going to be individual work. No teamwork is actually allowed for the project and for the rationale it's already explained on the syllabus. I also emphasize that in the beginning of the instruction for the project. Please uh, make sure you uh, read it through carefully before you start your development for your projects. And then you will need to complete quiz number seven for the previous uh, week's lecture. And also you need to start with week eight's lecture as well for this week for the uh, state design pattern and generics. Okay, so that's about what you can expect uh, for this week. And normal lecture load about three hours. And then you have to start with the final assignments for uh, this particular course, which is your projects. It will take about five weeks for you to uh, complete it. So there's a reason we set the uh, the duration for your project to be five weeks. So you don't really want to procrastinate too much. You want to start with that as early as possible. Any uh, questions or difficulty you have uh, about uh, completing a project as ever, please get in touch with me uh, so I can try to, try to help you uh, as early as possible.